Hello everybody, my name is Leafies, and thank you so much for clicking on this video, I hope you're all having a great day, welcome back. In my opinion, Minecraft 1.8.9 Combat is more simplistic, but far more fun than any other version CVP. That being said, I did grow up with it, so maybe I'm a little bit biased. However, because that is my favorite PvP version, today, as you saw by the title, I'm going to be showing you 9 different ways to improve at Minecraft 1.8.9 PvP. Java Edition, of course. I may not be the most qualified person to teach this, but take it from a leaderboards player, I do have some stuff to offer, and I hope this will help a few of you, if not most of you watching. Disclaimer, there are some people that will be far better than I am, many people actually, that can easily destroy me, and some people who are worse than I am. Obviously this video is more targeted at the latter half primarily, but anyone can learn new things, and I hope even if you're much better than me, which probably a lot of you are, I hope you learn something. So without further ado, let's jump right into it. Oh, and if you do enjoy this video and end up learning something new, a subscription to the channel would be incredible. It's free, and it means the world to me. The following tips are in no particular order, and one piece of terminology I'll be using a lot in the video is neutral game, which is a stage in the game where neither player has momentum over the other, and both are finding a way to start a combo. This is like after you aren't hitting each other for a while, or when the game just started. And yeah, that said, let's begin. Hope you enjoy, and hope you learn something. The first tip is to learn a method of sprint resetting. While block hitting does somewhat fall into this category, I'm going to cover it on its own because it isn't as movement based as the other following methods. Sprint resetting is a way to increase your knockback and in some cases take less knockback as well. W tapping is by far the most popular option, but all three main methods work just fine if executed right. For those of you who are unfamiliar with W tapping, it involves releasing and then reholding the W key after you land an attack on your opponent. Some people that I've just met spam click their W key, which generally isn't a very viable way to perform this method, but it will work every now and again in games like Sumo Duels or other small arena PvP. W tapping requires you to have a sprint key or toggle sprint. I personally dislike toggle sprint because it limits my motion, so I have shift bound as my sprint key. When PvPing, I always hold down shift and then W tap as needed. That being said, if I'm ever in a situation where I don't want to sprint, I just unhold shift. Very simple. S-tapping is very similar to W-tapping, but instead of releasing a key, you always hold down W, and then after you land a hit on your opponent, just tap S. Don't hold it, just a quick press to stop your sprint. I generally S-tap when bridge fighting, as halting your momentum is a good way to not get hit off, and in some cases take less knockback as well. That being said, I generally S-tap less in normal TP, because the stop of forward momentum gives your opponent the opportunity to land a combo if you miss your hit. Plus, it's harder to continue a combo while S-tapping, because it resets you to the neutral game, so any momentum you had was lost. 7 tapping is a bit more complex, but it involves rapidly pressing your A and D strafe keys, which may be harder because it involves more precise timing. That being said, it works well to create erratic movements, which will be harder for your opponent to predict. Out of all these methods, I highly recommend W tapping, and if you want to learn more, check out my video in the top right right now to learn how to W tap. It's a really good tutorial in my opinion, helped a lot of people, and I hope it helps you as well. The next tip kinda comes off the first, but it's strafing properly. Unlike sprint resetting, in my opinion, strafing isn't essential to PvP, but it helps a lot if you lack in other aspects. In my eyes, there are two instances of strafing, and two main types of strafing. The two instances are combo strafing, and neutral strafing. Both describe exactly what they sound like. Neutral strafing is strafing the neutral game when fishing for the first hit of a combo, and combo strafing is strafing during a combo. When neutral strafing, a little known handy tip is to approach diagonally. When first fighting, approaching straight on makes it easier for your opponent to hit you, but if you approach at an angle, your hitbox will be orientated in a way that makes it harder for your opponent to hit you, and easier for you to hit them. And now that brings us to the new, the two more known methods of strafing. The first is the most popular by far, I think, AD strafing or zigzagging. AD strafing involves holding down A and D at different intervals to zigzag in a manner that makes it for hard for your opponent to predict your motion. You can take this one step further and pay attention to your opponent's head. When you see them turning their head, strafe in the other direction to dodge the attack. This does require some good reactions though, so I don't do it because I don't have that good reactions, but if you can, it's super useful. I highly encourage learning how to AD strafe because it's an easier method and generally far more effective and easy to maintain the combo as well. The second strafing type is circle strafing. Circle strafing is a bit more predictable as it involves holding one of your strafe keys for a long period of time while keeping your cursor focused on the player, so you end up going in a circular motion around them. If the opponent doesn't have the best aim or you catch them off guard, this method is extremely effective however and it's very hard to escape. 
One important difference to note between the two methods is that while circle strafing, you shouldn't use any sprint reset tactics, because you want to keep your opponent as close to you as possible so you can go around them easily. On the other hand, while AD strafing, you want to sprint reset as often as possible after every hit, generally W tapping as it continue to land high knockback hits and not get yourself hit when you strafe. Tip 3 is perhaps one of the most important PvP tips I can offer, learning how to block it. In my opinion, block hitting is one of the best PvP methods, because not only does it work as a kind of sprint reset, it also doubles as a way to take less damage. There are a couple of flaws with block hitting though that you gotta learn to avoid if you wanna make this your primary PvP method like I do. The first is more obvious, block hitting only works with a sword. So being able to W tap or S tap and strafe is important as well if you're put in a situation where a sword isn't available or isn't the best weapon to use. The second flaw is that you leave yourself somewhat stationary if you block hit improperly. Generally, when you block hit, you want to block your sword whenever you think your opponent is about to land a hit. Blocking your sword too often slows you down immensely and leaves you very vulnerable to combos. If you're holding down right click or clicking it too often, good players will punish that and take advantage of your slower state. The third and final flaw of block hitting is that it isn't a very good sprint reset and isn't too compatible with strafing either. While block hitting does slow you down, it doesn't stop your sprint, which means you must combine it with a second sprint reset. When I PvP, I often W tap and block it at the same time. Do not get me wrong, I do not double I do not click W when I block. I just use both methods at once with different timing. W tap after you land a hit, and block when you think your opponent is gonna hit you. When I want to A and D strafe, I never block it, because a slowdown ruins your sideways and forward momentum. Strafing in general requires higher CPS to be more effective, so I end up only neutral strafing when I play. My PvP style involves landing a block hit combo, W tapping to neutral, strafing, rotting, block hitting, repeat. And that brings us to tip number four, rotting. When you do have a fishing rod, knowing how to properly use it gives you a big advantage over your opponent if they don't. I am by no means that good at rotting. I'm still learning how to master it, so I don't have too much advice to give. That being said, if you aren't familiar with it, using a fishing rod is a good way to halt or stun your opponent for a small period of time, so you can go in and get the hit before they do. It's great for breaking the neutral game and stringing into combos. Try to rod right before you make contact with your opponent. You halt their sprint, means you can land a hit on them before they land a hit back on you and their sprint builds up. Try to rod, I recommend hotkeying when you do so, that's like the only time I ever hotkey, I usually just scroll. But when I do rod, I recommend hotkeying, just a little quick tap. Plus, if you scroll back to your sword without actually retracting your rod, you don't lose any durability, which is something to note. Speaking of ways to break neutral, another super important factor is CPS. While many people may tell you CPS doesn't matter, to a certain extent, it definitely does. I wouldn't say you need high CPS to do well, but I do think you should be able to comfortably click around 6 or 7 CPS for better results. There are many methods to click faster. When butterfly clicking, which is pressing your left mouse button with both two with two fingers in alternating patterns, I get around 9 CPS, but I know people can get like 16 with that, so each to their own. I myself don't jitter click or anything, I know people ask me that a lot, I'm still able to get around 7 to 8 CPS though, just regular clicking. Which I find is generally enough to be fine by the way, you don't need that high CPS to succeed, but the higher CPS the better. High CPS isn't gonna hurt you if you can still aim. CPS is important in neutral because the faster you click, the more likely you are to land your hit on an opponent before the opponent lands a hit on you. The idea applies through your entire PvP battle, but the faster you click, the more likely you are to consistently hit first and land more hits in general. CPS is good, but it's not essential. Tip number 6 is also extremely important, and it's improving your aim. Obviously, aim is important, because if your opponent is running around you or through you, you have to be able to hit them without losing their position. My aim isn't the best aim ever, as you can tell by the clips that I've been playing, but it's pretty decent. And if you want to have better aim, I recommend to generally turn down your sensitivity or mouse CPI if you'd rather do that. It helps you if you have more controlled motion, and with a slower sensitivity, it's easier to control your mouse movement. But with all things here, practicing is an essential part of getting better, and practicing your aim is the only really way to improve. There's no like secret aim strategy that I'm aware of, at least. The next tip is more general, but it's also one of the more important ones on the list. And this one is to just have generally good game sense. There's really no way to practice this, it just comes with playing a lot, learning things, and knowing what to look out for. For example, knowing when to run is very important. If you're stuck in a combo, you're being comboed really hard, it can be hard to get out if you just keep going through. And if you have the space to do so, run. Reset to neutral so there's no momentum and you can start up a combo and you don't have to be strung by theirs. Being able to hotkey is also extremely important, especially in games where you have multiple important items in your inventory, like rods and pearls. Some keys are hard to reach, like the 9 on 8 slot, 
Because of this, I set my F key bound to my 9 slot, so I can quickly hot key to a pearl if I need to clutch. Speaking of which, having general game skills like enderpearl clutching or MLGing are also useful to know how to do, especially in void based games like The Bridge, Bed Wars, or Sky Wars. Depending on the game mode, inventory management is also crucial, especially in pop PvP, but just in general. Being organized and knowing where things are in your inventory will definitely help you if you need to quickly get something out of your inventory. I was playing ranked the other day and this person just was running away from me picking up ender pearls. However, they ended up putting the ender pearls in their inventory randomly, and so when they stopped to collect them, I had enough time to kill them, and they could have run away if they actually had an organized inventory. Just something to keep in mind. I always have a general layout playing games, which I recommend you do as well. For example, Sky Wars. My hot key is all my hot bar is always sword, rod, bow, pots and gaps, blocks, and pearls. Speaking of items, it's also important to recognize which items are important. For example, if playing Sky Wars, prioritize a KB rod. Also, when faced with various different weapons, know which one is the best and know which armor will be the help the most helpful. A useful mod that I use, and so does Technoblade actually, is the Vanilla Enhancements mod. It tells you many different things, one of which being what enchants are an item as well as how much damage an item does when you hover over it in your hotbar. Super useful. Additionally, it also tells you how much arrows are in your bow, so if you don't have Vanilla Enhancements and you use Forge, then I don't see the reason not to use it. It's super useful, super good mod, I do recommend. But having general game sense and knowing what things are important, when to run, how to move, being able to do general skills, super useful in PvP and will definitely help you get better especially in less traditional modes like Scourers and Bedwars. Tip number 8 strings all of the previous, but it's being familiar with your game mode. I briefly touched upon this in the previous tip, but knowing which items are important, as well as which to use, is super, super crucial to succeed. This holds true in most strategy-based games, like Bedwars and Skywars, which I've been mentioning a lot, but I say that because they aren't traditional tools, not the 1v1, there's an arena, there's a void, and there's different types of items, you don't have the same items as your opponent, so you gotta know to work with what you have. Different items have far more value than others, and it's important to recognize that as well. Knowing how to approach someone with more armor than you is also important, something you don't really face in duels because you got the same armor as your opponent. But this time, in Skywars, you have to manage your stuff, in Bedwars, you don't have to know what to buy. Just being familiar with your game mode all around is super useful, and yeah, example, you're playing a void based game, get a KB weapon, such as the KB stick in Bedwars or the KB rod in Skywars. Just know what's going on and know what's important. Finally, tip number 9, the last tip, is to just practice. This is always my first go-to piece of advice when people ask me how to get better at PvP. Just practice. There's no way to learn anything without trying something out, and doing so against real players, especially those better than you, is the best way to learn new things about your playstyle and things you want to adopt from your opponent if they did well. Playing with people better than you especially is really good, even on a team, because you can see what they do and ask them questions if you're up for it. If not, just watch them. I'm sure they'll share some strategy. Like, whenever I play Bed Wars, I play with people so much better than me, and I learn a lot about the game, and then I get better. But really, very few people have natural talent and start super good at the game, so practicing and playing a lot is the best way to get better. Best way to win games as well. Actually, that's not true. If you want to win games, just hack. Anyway guys, thanks so much for watching, hope you have enjoyed this video, I really hope you did learn something, if not, sorry, if yes, then I hope it did help, but I'll see you on the next one, thank you so much for watching, and yeah, have a good one.